Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to the third webinar of the Educational Technology or EdTech for All webinar series presented by the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Educational Technology and Office of Special Education Programs. We are really excited to share with you about the digital ebook tool, Bookshare. So let's get started. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, just a few housekeeping points. You should be able to see an ASL interpreter on your screen. So if you do not, please let us know. Please be aware that you can turn on the closed captioning feature by finding the CC button on your screen. And you can also share questions during the webinar by using the Q&A feature on your screen. We will answer questions from the audience at the end of the webinar. Why are we here today? We'd love you to participate in a quick exercise. Imagine with us that you're holding a book in your hands. If you cannot see the words because they're too small or reading black text on white paper is impossible, you're not reading the book. If you cannot hold the book because of weak muscle tone or can't turn the page because you struggle with your fine motor skills, you're not reading this book. Lastly, if you struggle with decoding the words on the page or get so tripped up when you're sounding out the words that you miss the point of the story, you're not really reading this book. Now picture the students in your classrooms. Do any of your students run into these reading barriers like those we just imagined? Bookshare eliminates these barriers by providing materials that work in the way the student needs when they need them. We'll talk more about what Bookshare is, but let's start by hearing from a few Bookshare users. Here's a quote. I am a special education teacher and my kids love Bookshare. It's wonderful to see them excited about literature and asking me to keep adding books to their library. The fact that it reads out loud allows them access to books that would otherwise be hard, too hard for them to read. Another user says, this was a life changer for my dyslexic son. He was able to get a majority of his textbooks as eBooks to use with a text to voice app. He went from barely reading to now blowing through a book a week. He's been using it for five years and loves it. And finally, reading with Bookshare takes me into a whole new world of adventure while also helping me cope with life's challenges. With all that in mind, we are here today to equip educators and school leaders with evidence-based ed tech tools to implement with those students who have or do not have disabilities with the goal of improving student outcomes. And before we get started, just a reminder of two key terms we'll be using throughout the webinar. Educational technology or ed tech is any technology used for the purpose of learning and accessibility is the design of apps, devices, materials, and environments that support and enable access to content and educational activities for all learners. Educational materials and technologies are accessible to people with disabilities if they are able to acquire the same information, engage in the same interactions, and enjoy the same services as people who do not have disabilities. Tina and I are excited to present on the path of the Department of Education. I am Ellery from the Office of Educational Technology, or OET. I am a white female with brown curly hair. I am a previous middle and high school special education teacher and parent advocate. Currently, I support OET projects around accessibility. And OET's mission is to develop national educational technology policy and establish the vision for how technology can be used to transform teaching and learning and how to make everywhere all the time learning possible for early learners through K-12, higher education and adult education. And I'll pass it to Tina. Hi, I'm Tina from the Office of Special Education Programs. I'm a white female, also with brown curly hair, and I'm a former special education teacher, special education director, and currently an education program specialist in the Department of Education. 
The Office of Special Education Programs is dedicated to improving results for infants, toddlers, children, and youth with disabilities ages birth through 21. OSEP directly and through its partners and grantees develops a wide range of research-based products, publications, and resources to assist states, local school district personnel, and families to improve results for students with disabilities. Now we will introduce the people we are all here to learn from today. Panelists, please share your name, a visual description of yourself, and your role as it relates to Bookshare. I can call on people one by one. So first up is Lisa. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Waters Vern and I am a white female with dark brown shoulder length hair. Um, I have a background in special education as a former um, teacher in the classroom, a former therapist outside of the classroom, and a university professor. I have been with Benetech now for 11 years and have seen us grow. So when I talk today, I'll speak about Bookshare and how it can improve the lives of students with disabilities. Next up, we have Jackie. Hi, I'm Jackie Knight. I am a white female with long red hair. I am an assistive technology specialist at this time for a district in Southern California, and I'm a credentialed special education teacher, and I work with students preschool to 22. I'm currently a Bookshare champion teacher. Thank you. And last but not least, Emery. Hello, I'm Emery Lauer. I am a 16-year-old female with short brown hair. I go to high school in Texas and I have been using Bookshare since I was in second grade. We are excited to have you all with us today and to hear from this panel. We would like to start by learning more about Bookshare and who, who it serves. Lisa, can you tell us more about Bookshare and how it supports students with different needs? Absolutely. So thank you both Ellery and Tina for having us here today to talk about Bookshare. The main problem we're working to solve is that printed text does not always work for all learners. It's estimated between 5 and 20% of students experience bar barriers to printed reading books. So as Tina had shown you, imagine you're holding that book in your hand. If you can't access the text on that page, you're not reading that book. So these students need to consume content in very different ways. To fully participate in school and work, they need to access the same materials as their peers at the exact same time. While many educators have taken great strides in getting curriculum in digital formats, we want you to remember that just because something is digital does not mean it's accessible. Simply put, Bookshare is an ebook library, the world's largest accessible ebook library, as a matter of fact, and Bookshare makes reading easier by letting students read in the way that works for them. They can listen to books, they can follow along with audiobooks and hi highlighted karaoke style. So you can imagine highlighting the word as it says the word so that the students can actually follow along in the book as it's reading. All the books are formatted to read in large text and you can change the filters and the color to meet the needs of the students who are reading those books. Students can even access our books in braille files. Like it mentions here, Students who qualify for Bookshare, it's, it's a completely free service, as long as they remain a US student. This is true when they graduate and head to college or into a vocational program as well. If they become a homeschool student or attend a more alternative school in your area, Bookshare is still free thanks to the support from the Department of Education Office of Special Education Programming. There are currently over 1 million titles in the Bookshare collection, and we're able to offer a huge selection of books by utilizing this text-to-speech technology. We do know we do now have a small collection of titles that are human narrated audio, but the vast majority of our books in the library are accessed using this text to speech technology. These books include books like textbooks, leveled readers, and all the books that students really need for school. But we also have books that kids would want to read for fun, like the New York Times bestsellers or books on upskilling, even driver's license manuals in all 50 states. 
If we don't have a book that a student needs for school, it can be requested and we will also add it to the library. So I think we want to um, jump on a little bit, Ellery, if we can fast forward to the next two slides, if that's OK. So on the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about what is Bookshare. I had mentioned that already. Um, but who qualifies, I think, is a really important conversation to have. So to be clear, students have to qualify for their free Bookshare membership, and they generally fall into these categories. To qualify, you have to have a reading challenge that impacts your ability to access physically printed books or text that's online, right? So thinking back to that example that Tina gave as far as a visual impairment, not, not being able to see the words or a learning disability or not being able to hold the book and having a phys physical disability. You know, we imagine this all together, but can you think of kids in your class who meet this criteria? If the answer is that they can meet this criteria, they probably qualify for Bookshare. And I want to clarify that while we often think of special education law as a dictator for what services kids can and cannot have, Bookshare operates under copyright law. So while many students may have an IEP or a 504, it is not required for a Bookshare membership. As our other panelists will discuss more, students that end up with IEPs or receiving special education services are general education students first, and you've all seen them in your classroom. So I would encourage you to really think about the students you're working with and the qualifications that we discussed to see if they are actually eligible for Bookshare and how Bookshare would benefit them in your classroom. Thank you, Lisa. Now that we understand more about Bookshare, can you share a little more with us about how students are using Bookshare? What tools do they use to read these books? too many buttons on the page. So um, yeah, yeah, so I said that kids are reading books in the way that works for them. So if you think about the devices that the kids have in their pockets today, that's really how we want them to be able to access Bookshare books. So this happens through a variety of apps and reading devices. Um, the collection is available on cell phones and tablets, both iPhone and Android. It's available on laptops, desktops, braille devices, and even smart speakers. And based on the device and the format that works for that student, they can access the books through many different ways like Word. So imagine downloading a, a book into a Word document and having it on your computer. EPUB, which is a file that makes all of this accessibility happen. Braille ready format. So if you have a refreshable Braille device or need hard copy Braille, works there. And audio, right? So whether it's the highlighted karaoke speech audio where they see the word and hear the word at the same time, or if you just want to listen along to the book. And students can access these books on the different platforms that they need based on their needs. So we have created a suite of free reading options for students' use. They can use our Bookshare Reader um, for web access through a normal browser. So imagine you have your laptop open or your computer open. They can just hit a button that says Read Now, and they're reading that book. With that one click, they can read these books on Chromebooks, laptops, and their tablets. And we're really excited because we recently launched our new Bookshare mobile reader app, which gives students the same access through the free app on iOS and Android. This means that students can access their books at school on their Chromebook, and then when they get home, they can open that exact same book in the exact same place that they left off using their phone or iPad. This cloud technology enables us to really help the students, you know, remember where they were, keep on track, and continue to using the books. So students generally access this through what we call an organizational membership. And when we say organizational membership, we mean through the school. An account is set up by the school. Educators can add books to that, um, to that platform. They can assign those books and students can then read those books. With an organizational account or a school account only, students are able to view the entire catalog, but they're only able to access the books that are assigned. That's why it's really important to think about the free individual membership the, or the home membership because this can be added on top of their school membership, or they can just have an individual membership. In this case, students can access any books in the collection that they would like to read. They have the flexibility of finding the book and reading it exactly when they find it. And so because we see the value in both, we really encourage teachers, educators, schools to make sure students have both the school access and the home access. But before I turn it over to our wonderful Bookshare experts, I'd like to share a short video so you'll be able to see what Bookshare actually looks like for your student. Please let me know um, if you cannot hear the sound, but I'm going to press play. 
Read what you want, where you want with Bookshare Reader. Bookshare Reader opens the door to millions of eBooks in easy to read formats and lets you read in ways that work for you. Listen to books in high quality audio. Follow along with karaoke style highlighting. Adjust reading speed, voices, fonts, and colors. Read and access math equations using MathML. X subscript one baseline plus 457 X subscript three baseline negative. Download books and read offline on smartphones and tablets. Stop reading and pick up where you left off across devices. Available on web browsers, iOS and Android tablets and smartphones, and Alexa enabled smart speakers. Whether you want to read for school or relax to the latest bestsellers, read what you want, where you want with Bookshare Reader. So thanks everyone. Um, thanks for listening to me and, and watching that short video. That's the, that we're done with the boring part. The next part is where I get really excited because this is where you get to hear from actual Bookshare users. So I'm gonna turn it over to my panelists, my uh, co-panelists to have them talk about how they have actually used Bookshare in their lives and how it's impacted their ability, not only um, for their students, but as an individual. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, we're extremely lucky today to have Emery, an active Bookshare student user, and Jackie, an educator that implements Bookshare within her district. Emery, we'd love to start by hearing from you. What was your relationship like with reading before finding Bookshare? Could you describe what words on a page look like for you? So when I first was diagnosed with dyslexia, I was really young. I was in about first, second grade. And I just it, remember being frustrated with how I wasn't comprehending what I was seeing on a page. So it was like I could see that there were words there and they just, they didn't make sense. It didn't matter how many times someone explained it to me, didn't matter how many times I read them or sounded the words out, nothing was getting through. And it was kind of like the words were there, but they were kind of like blurry and in a way made no sense, had no meaning attached to them. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Would you talk a little bit about what reading is like for you now? How has Bookshare changed your relationship with reading? I love reading. I have picked up a couple of books uh, a lot recently that are like hard copy. And I don't think I would be able to do that without using Bookshare first, because the way Bookshare helped me to uh, it like lit this fire, this love for reading. And I don't think I would be able to pick up a hard copy book and like be like, oh yeah, I want to read that without Bookshare's influence. That's fabulous. As we know, most students who qualify for Bookshare spend most of their time in a general education classroom. Emery, what do you wish your teachers better understood about the accommodations or technology that you're using to succeed in the classroom? For me, it's a lot of wanting the teacher to trust me enough to know what I'm doing. And it's a lot of just taking the time and listening to me because I know what I need and I know why certain things are listed in my 504. I wish that teachers would like sit down and like talk with it through their, with their students um, and not try and like dictate or like understand from their point of view and just listen to us because we know why we need what we need. Emery, that's so important to be your own best advocate. Thank you for sharing that. Jackie, would you also share about your students' experiences with reading in a general education classroom and the misunderstandings that they're facing? Sure. What do you wish that other teachers understood about these students? 
Sure, Tina, I'm happy to do that. So um, the first thing I want to just remind everybody is that it's not your students and our and my students, right? It's not the special ed students and the general ed students. All students first are part of general education. And so we have to remember that they're our students and it's our responsibility as a whole to implement accommodations. So I really wanna put that out there because when a student enters your room, their need doesn't disappear, right? You, they may look like they don't have a disability. I hear that a lot. Well, they don't look like they have a disability. Um, disab some disabilities, as we all know, some disabilities can be seen and other disabilities can't be. And so it's up to us as educators and up, especially up to the general education teachers to implement the accommodations that have been agreed upon. Um, as well as, um, as we, whether it's a 504 or an IEP, so that the student can then access the material, right? Their, dis, their, um, their need for accommodations don't disappear when they enter your room. And so I really want to put that in there, that um, one of the things that I think frustrates a lot of uh, students, and I, and I think Emery really hit on that really well, is that the general edu education teachers will kind of forget <laughs> or not include. And that can be really, really frustrating for students with disabilities. Thanks, Jackie. Following up on that, what advice would you give an educator who's trying to get a student more comfortable using their accommodations like Bookshare in the classroom? So, um, couple things that I would recommend. Um, the, the first one is really important. Please don't put the onus on the student. If the student has really great self-advocating skills, then great. Like Emery clearly has amazing self-advocating skills and they will, you know, come to you and say, this is what I need. Please trust me in using this. Other students might be new in using Bookshare or other accommodations. And so then it's up to you as the educator to be well-informed in what that means. And there are lots of support personnel across school district and across schools that can help general education teachers. So I would say the first people we should talk to is talk to the um, other special education teachers, the case managers, and then take a few minutes and look at a Bookshare video. Bookshare has an amazing library of resources and they're not long videos. Take five minutes every day and just learn a little snippet of how to use the accommodation. Um, and then if you're still a little confused, don't make the student teach it to you, right? Or you can say, hey, I am a little confused. Can you show me how you use it? But it's not from the teacher's perspective, right? So it's not, oh, I don't understand this voice or why are the words so big, right? It's about what the student needs and who the student is, not about what we as educators need. I hope that made sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Sure did. Emery, for you, how did you get comfortable using your technology at school and around your peers? How do you feel about accessing Bookshare at school now? It takes a while to be comfortable doing what you need to do when it's not normal. But now I find it's so easy because it's just the way I learn. And um, it, it does take time. Like when I was younger, it would be like, well, I don't want my friends to like gawk at me or stare at me while I'm like pulling out my tablet or computer or phone to like listen to a book that we were reading. Um, but now I find that it's, it's really not a big deal what other people think of me when I'm just doing what I need to do to learn. And I find that it's easier when you get older and you learn how to be your own person. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emery and Jackie. And um, thank you for those who have submitted questions. Please feel free to continue submitting questions through the Q&A feature, and we will get to them at the end of the webinar. Um, Emery, you've touched on how Bookshare has allowed you to not just keep up with classmates, but really excel. How has access to accommodations and supports that you need to succeed impacted your mental health? 
It's really changed a lot for me because when I was younger and I didn't have access to these tools, it was frustrating and I found myself being disappointed in myself and angry because why couldn't I like read how my peers were and why couldn't I understand what was written on a page? And it's really important that we have like students with disabilities like me have access to these things because if they don't, it can it can really be self damaging like to their esteem because it can feel like they're not good enough. And I feel like I'm lucky to have access to these tools that I have access to. Thank you so much for sharing about um, the importance of reading and mental health. Um, Jackie, I'm curious if you also have seen any examples of uh, Bookshare really impacting a student's life even outside of their reading. So I think Emery hit on a really great point. Um, if you think about, uh, and this is something I've observed actually, if you think about doing the thing that's uh, the least favorite thing in your entire world that you have to do day in and day out, um, you can't tell from the screen, but I am a very small person. I am under five feet tall. If someone told me that every single day for six hours a day, I had to, uh, you know, play basketball and make and, and score points, you know, um, against people who are seven feet tall, I would be absolutely miserable all day long. And this happens to our students. They are being forced to, you know, as part of school, we read and we read not just to earn in reading time, but we read in math and we read in science and we are reading in PE. I mean, all the time we are asking students to read. And if you ask them to do the thing that is the hardest thing in the world for them, right, day in and day out, we're going to see behaviors. We're going to see a lot of escape avoidance. We're going to see tantrums and we're going to see depression, right? The students are being asked to do something they can't do. And what I've noticed is that when students gain the skills and access to the accommodations that they need in order to be successful, those tantrums reduce, the escape avoidance behaviors reduce, and then they're actually learning. And then once they're learning, they start feeling start feeling good about themselves again. And then what I see, I've seen because I've been doing this a really long time, like 20 years. Um, I have students who've gone to college and who've been successful and who are now married and happy and have really productive, fulfilling lives, right? Whatever it is that they find to be productive in their life. I have a student who's become a former student who's become a police officer. I have a former student who's opened their own business, another who's a real estate agent. They are happy adults, right? And that is our goal in the end, is at a certain point, whether the student graduates with a high school diploma or when they're they exit at 22, right? Because that's what it is in education. Um, what is it that's going to happen? How are they going to feel good about themselves? And I think Bookshare allows that piece that many students are missing. And again, if we for the general education teachers and for our special education teachers who are on this call, think about what are the reasons for task avoidance, right? What is the reason for behaviors? And if reading is one of them, let's get this implemented. Let's get them accessing and feeling good about themselves. And so many of our schools are one-to-one -one with Chromebooks or laptops or iPads. They won't look different than any other student. And again, that's going to help their mental health. And so I really want to thank Emery for being, for bringing that out and letting us have that conversation. Thank you both so much for talking about such an important piece that often can get forgotten in education. Um, and continuing on, when thinking about Bookshare specifically, what should an educator know about getting started? Um, Emery, what do you wish your teachers understood about Bookshare? Bookshare? One thing I want to make clear, your student isn't different from your other students. They are just as smart and as bright and as like, intelligent as all of your other students they just learn differently and when you have these tools and the they're learning with with these tools and these different ways it's important to know that that's just how they learn and when you 
try to understand or like when you're hovering over your student just to be like oh I wonder how this works it's kind of like why are you not trusting me with this because it's it's a tool it's how we learn and I wish that teachers would just ask instead of hovering like they they're trying not to like snoop but they are it's important that you know why we have these tools and we want to make sure you understand how they work we want to communicate with you and it's very important that you just ask your students and because they will happily show you and they will have these conversations with you and something i wish that some of my teachers have done was just ask me instead of questioning plans on my 504 or questioning why i pulled up something on my web browser just let's sit down and have a conversation let's talk about it because i want to make sure that you know for future students not just myself it'll it'll benefit you as a teacher thank you emory for sharing that valuable info insights for educators and jackie i know for Teachers have so much going on and starting something new can be really overwhelming. So what information would you share about getting started with Bookshare? It's a lot easier than you think it is, right? So um, I'm an assistive technology specialist that I, I joke, I hate technology because it's always a new learning curve, right? You have to learn something new. It's a different program, but Bookshare makes it really easy. Um, their, their tools and their library, everything is just really streamlined and it makes it really easy. Um, the other thing I would say is that for this on the student side, that the new browser is fantastic. And so there's not, it's very intuitive on how to press play, how to change the settings. Um, and so it's as Bookshare has progressed through the years, uh, it's become a lot easier to use from the educator perspective as well as the student perspective. And then the other thing is I would say is encourage the individual accounts a lot. Okay, because that gives students more um, uh, faster access to the books. They're not dependent upon the, uh, the teacher to add the books to them. So encourage the parents to get involved as well. Thank you so much for sharing, Jackie. I'm sure there's a lot of teachers who are excited to try it out. Um, and so, Jackie, what about for any parents that are curious about using Bookshare with their kids? What information should educators share with their students' families about accessing Bookshare at home? Oh, I love this question. So um, there are, like I mentioned, the training modules are amazing and the parents should be looking at them as well. The minute that the, um, the teacher or the instructor sends the link or as soon as a person qualifies for Bookshare, either, uh, you know, however that, that school does it, um, parents create that account get it going and start using it at home with your students. Um, I like to say that, um, you know, reading with your child, we all know reading with children is the best thing that you can do. Well, start reading using Bookshare with your child because perhaps the pace that you're reading at is the wrong pace for your child. Or perhaps they need you to help that they haven't had the words highlighted. And so having the words highlighted is going to help your child. So start when you're doing your cuddle reading time. And that can go for many, many years where parents can read with their children. Um, I'm a parent and I probably did it up until age 11, even though my child was a verbose reader, we use that as a connection time. So use Bookshare as that connection time. Don't make reading a struggle, make it enjoyable and something that you do as a family. Um, that way your child knows that you support them with Bookshare. And that's probably one of the most important things out there is for the parents to support their child in their use of reading so that the child feels uh, emotionally supported at home so that when they go to school, they'll, they'll, be, they'll have a little bit more of that glass filled for um, perseverance. Thank you for those tips, um, Jackie. And Emery, from the student perspective, is there anything you wish your parents knew about Bookshare when you were first getting started? I don't. I like everything that Jackie touched on, and I feel like my parents were really, um, were really, uh, I'm struggling to find the word. <laughs> um, 
happy or excited to start learning about Bookshare with me. And they were learn they were learning alongside me as I was learning how to use it as well. And I feel like they did a wonderful job in my uh, Bookshare journey. Ellery, can I add one more thing? Please go ahead. Um, I want to remind parents, just like I reminded the teachers, the Bookshare is not for them. It's for the student. It's for the user. And so it's okay if the voice is a little bit too robotic for you as the parent, or if the text is too big for you as the parent, because again, it's not for the parent, it's for the child. And so if they know that you're okay with a slow down or a speeded up voice or a different size font or a different color background, then they'll feel good about their reading. Okay, so it's for the child, not for the parent. I just, I just want to hit on that because sometimes our parents forget that. Great, thank you so much. Um, and before we finish up with one last question for Lisa, Emery, is there anything else that you would like to share with this audience of educators and um, caretakers? What would you like them to know about students in their classroom that may be like you? For me, a lot of the times I just wanted to be seen. I just wanted my teachers to see that I was struggling and I needed help. And I, it, it got there eventually, but I still have teachers that are very withdrawn and don't really want to learn about my 504 or why I have a 504 even. And just, I want to remind teachers to keep an open mind. I want to remind them that all of their students are not the same and some of us need extra help. And it can be intimidating, but we, we know a lot about ourselves <laughs> and you, we, you just need to ask us and we will gladly talk to you. And I wish my teachers had asked me before making some of the decisions that they made for me. Um, yeah, so just ask your students. Just talk with them. See them. Thank you, Emery, for being such a wonderful advocate and sharing that um, for other educators. Um, and so we are going to take some questions um, from the audience, so please add them into the Q&A. But before we do so, Lisa, would you like to highlight any resources available for educators to learn more about what um, about Bookshare and how to get started with implementation. Sure, so um, we have a number of training resources that are on the Bookshare website and help material. Um, we encourage people to go check it out, to go and, and learn a little bit more about Bookshare. Um, there are getting started guides. There's the ABCs of, of uh, Bookshare for educators. Um, we even have a reading tool wizard. If you're not sure what tools you should be using with the devices you have, go and you know, check that out, fill in your information. And then if you get stuck, we have customer support that's there to make sure that um, you have a seamless experience and that the kids are reading as fast as they can. You know, So the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is sign up as a school district. If your school already has an account, get on that account, make sure you can start adding your students. And as soon as you add your students, start assigning books, get them excited. You know, we're, we're, I know a friend of mine, her school started today, right? So we're really back in the back to school, um, you know, mindset. But even if you're not, kids can be reading the Bookshare books before they even get back. So, you know, if you get stuck or you have problems, the Bookshare website is a, a wealth of information that will help. The other thing I wanted to highlight, which I don't think is included here, but we're happy to send information to anyone who's interested. Let's say this is kind of new to you, right? You're not entirely sure about special education, you, you know, you have some kids in your class, but you don't even know where to get started. We've actually developed some modules that are specifically designed for gen ed teachers, talking about creating accessible classrooms and really thinking through how do we make sure that our learning environments are universally designed so that the students with disabilities and even those without who come into your classroom are prepared and able to learn. And so we encourage you to, to it's a three-part module. We'd love to have you be part of it and learn from it. Um, and you'll see Bookshare is a piece of it, right? Bookshare is not the only solution, but it's a piece of that solution to making sure we have student success in the classroom. Thanks, Lisa. 
Um, now we're going to turn to our audience to see if there are follow-up questions and give them the opportunity to ask panelists questions. Uh, please add your question using the Q&A feature in Zoom, and I'll read out questions as they come in. Let's see. One I see here. I think has been there, um, is we have found much greater adoption of ed tech tools that meet the needs of students with one of the qualifications that you mentioned when the resource is made available to all students. This would allow general ed teachers to utilize it in class for all students. Do you see this program ever expanding to become a digital library resource for all learners? So Chris, thank you for asking that question. I think really as lisa mentioned earlier in this session that the availability of this books these books come with an exception to copyright law and because there are copyright restrictions on providing information to folks uh, without disabilities who have not purchased the material um, we're unable to make this available to all learners Tina, can i just add real quickly the Bookshare platform itself is available to all people, right? It's really the content that's in the collection that gets limited with the copyright exception. So, you know, if we have content from a publisher that a school district purchase, you know, we need to talk to the publishers to say, hey, we've already purchased this book. All kids can use it. Can they use it in this format? And I think we're a little far away from there. I think they're, um, you know, we need to have a more integrated um conversation with those publishers to make sure. But let's say, for example, a publisher were to say, okay, New York City Public Schools, you've purchased this curriculum, then then it, we don't have to worry about that copyright limitation and all students can use it. So I just want to be really clear that it was designed and it's designed that all students can use it, but we are still unfortunately limited by copyright restrictions on that. Um, and just as a little aside, you know, um, as part of the grant from the Department of Ed, we also work with publishers to help them create accessible materials and be certified that everything that they're producing is accessible. So when you're working with your schools and you're selecting the materials that you want to be using in the classroom, it's important to really look and see what is accessible already and to purchase those accessible materials because that way all students, whether they are just, whether they have been diagnosed with a disability or um, have been identified as needing a service such as Bookshare, can use the built-in accessibility features that are good for all people. Thanks, Lisa, that's really helpful. Um, another person um, shared that they really enjoyed hearing from Emery and that not all kids are comfortable letting others um, know that they need things like this. So Emery, they're wondering if you could share more about how it went when you were transitioning or changing schools, maybe from elementary to middle or middle school to high school. Um, how did you approach this with new schools or new teachers? Um, did they embrace Bookshare or what, what did you need to do to make sure things would work for you? Yeah, so I actually changed uh, high schools between my freshman and sophomore year. Um, so I, there's also another transition in there, um, but it has definitely been different from middle to high school and elementary to middle. Um, so every teacher is different and most of them are willing to learn, but I have had some teachers who are, um, a little more hesitant. Um, but I have found that they will ask me sometimes about it and I will just respond or um, they will be like, hey, I saw you had a 504, what do I need to do? Um, so a lot of the time it's um, them coming to me, but other times it's me going to them when I've been in the class for a couple days and they haven't really touched on it, I will be like, hey, just to let you know, I have a 504 um, and then it'll take off from there. They'll like ask me questions um, and I will answer them to the best of my abilities. But it does change from when you're in elementary school to when you get to high school because in elementary school, most of the teachers knew me from uh, because I had been there for 
like six years and most of them knew the extensions that I used. Um, but when I got to middle school, it was a lot of me advocating for myself instead of other teachers talking. And then when I got to high school, it was even more so. It was even, it was a lot more of me explaining to them. Um, so it does change, but it's a lot of you becoming more of a uh, responsible adult. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like you're a very responsible learner. Jackie, I see you wanted to contribute some more. Yeah, I just, for um, for the special education case managers or AT specialists out there, um, and for parents, a couple of things that I recommend for students as they're uh, what we call matriculating between grade levels um, and sometimes matriculating between schools, you can... Um, I create for all of my students, uh, here's a little bit of information email about all of the students on my caseload, and I send them out to the general education teachers. And so as the AT specialist, I say, these are the tools that they use, and these are the reasons why they use it. And I make it look pretty, and you know, it's a nice little email for them to look at. Um, I will, if the student has a, an adult support, I will print it out for them. Um, and I called a little cheat sheet. So it would be Jackie's cheat sheet, right? To get to know Jackie. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk about is um, printing a, and parents can do this or um, case managers can do this. You take a copy and you laminate it um, and you put it in the student's fo folder and it's their accommodations page or a list of their accommodations from their IEP or 504 plan. And then that way for our students who are not as um, good at as for advocating for themselves, they're a little bit more shy about that. They can just kind of show it to the teacher or to the substitute because also with substitutes, they have to advocate for themselves as well. So then they have their accommodations and they can say, no, I need this tool because, and they can just show it to them and not have to explain it. And again, it takes the onus off the student and um, allows them to help with their self-advocacy and it builds that strength. Can I jump in there? Sure. I will say that a lot of the experiences I had with my teachers from middle school shaped the way that I, uh, look at it in high school. So without some of the conversations I had with teachers in middle school, I don't think I would be able to advocate for myself like I do in high school, because there are good experiences with teachers and there are bad experiences with teachers, unfortunately, because not they don't always want to take the time out of their day to get to understand you. And I think it is really helpful if you have that copy of your 504 with you to show them That's great, Emery. It is really remarkable to hear how you've grown in your advocacy for yourself over the years. And it's just really, really special to hear you talking about how you love reading and how this tool has benefited you so much in school. Um, we have another question here. I think it was based on something you said, Jackie. Um, it says the exit age is 22. Is that an all-inclusive age or the age range extended for college students? So when I said 22, I was talking about IDEA, right? So um, in the K-12 world, right? Um, I actually have preschoolers all the way to 22 because of IDEA. Um, Bookshare actually is use, has, has materials for, because there's also another question, um, for post-secondary education, there are materials for that. I'm going to let someone else talk more about the technicals of that because I don't, I don't do post-secondary. <laughs> right. I think we can toss it to Lisa here. Yeah. So um, Bookshare has books from very early education all the way up to adult content. And so um, what we're hoping to do with the schools is to get people excited about using this accessible, accessible technology. It's one of those days and I can't speak, um, you know, when they're younger so that when they are adults and they're out in the work world, they're using it as well, right? And so um, because of that, we do have college textbooks we, you know, they're a little bit more complicated than some of our K-12 textbooks, but we do still encourage our college students to use the technology and use the, the content so that they can continue to be as successful as they were in the K-12 environment in their post-secondary institutions. Great, thank you, Lisa. 
And I think that is uh, responding to uh, the question from Kendra too, about is it available to students in post-secondary education? Uh, so thank you for that. Um, there is another question here. It says, why are English language learners not automatically qualified students? Are there translation accommodations on the site? Okay. So when we think about who qualifies, and again, we're talking about copyright, an exception to the copyright law. So we're talking about people who cannot access traditionally printed text. If someone hasn't had access to the English language, but has access to a Spanish language, for instance, and can read in Spanish, they don't have a reading barrier. They have a language barrier. And that's a different, that's a different um, situation and a different issue we want to address. The people who qualify for Bookshare are the people that cannot access that traditional text because they've had experience with it, they've been, um, teachers have worked with them, and it just isn't something that they're able to access in the way that it's presented to them. We do, however, know there are a lot of English language learners who also have print disabilities, and we want to make sure that that is something that is considered as well. Is the student not reading because they don't understand English, or are they not reading because they don't understand the text? And if it's the text, then they may also qualify for Bookshare. Bookshare um, and Benetech does not translate anything. In fact, that is, um, that's prohibited from copyright law. We do, however, have content in 70 different languages. So we do have supports in other languages and possibly have the same book in English and many other languages. So Harry Potter, for example, I know we have it in English, we have it in Spanish, we have it in other languages as well. Um, and so if you have students that are Bookshare qualified or Bookshare eligible, they can read in the language that works best for them. Thanks, Lisa. Here's another important question, uh, maybe from the publisher side. They said, how do publishers get their books on Bookshare? So I have colleagues on the call and I don't know, Amanda, it looks like you're typing an answer. If you wanna answer it or I can take a stab at, to start it. Um, we have a, an entire team that works with publishers to help them understand the benefits of Bookshare and to get their books into our collection. We have agreements with, and I don't wanna undercount it. I know we have agreements with, I think about a thousand different publishing partners who automatically give us their titles to put into the collection. And we also proactively go out and talk to publishers. Um, I had mentioned earlier, if we don't have a book in the collection that you need, we will go and get that book um, from the publishers. Sometimes we have to purchase the book and chop and scan off the spine, which is painful for book lovers, but we chop and scan off the spine and feed it into a machine that will turn it into an accessible text. Um, but many times we get the we get the books directly from the publishers in a digital feed that we're able to convert into an accessible format. Thanks, Lisa. Amanda, did you want to add anything there? Hi, Tina. Um, I put it in the chat, um, but I just I put a link in there that if somebody would like to connect a publisher with Bookshare, um, we have a website where that publisher can um, directly contact our director of content um, and and um, kind of put them together that way. Um, that would be my best resource for for someone who wanted to connect a publisher with Bookshare. Great. Thank you so much. I'm not seeing any additional questions in the Q&A. We've had a lot of really good ones. We'll allow. Uh, if it's okay with you, there was one question that came up that was answered um, in the text, but I wanna give a little bit more color to it. Um, so there were a few different questions that talked about, you know, if my child doesn't have an IEP or doesn't have a 504, how do they actually qualify for Bookshare? And so we wanna make sure it's um, very clear. We at Bookshare don't determine who qualifies and who does not um, and who does not qualify for Bookshare. We rely on the educators, the, the professionals in that child's life or that person's life to understand whether or not they meet the criteria. We call that person a competent authority. So whether you go through your school, the school will sign an organizational agreement that says everybody we add to our roster will meet the criteria or you have an individual um, account where you have a professional or a teacher, or you have access to the documentation that supports that this child needs accessible technology, that person will then be the person who says, yes, this person needs an account. So that's why we say you don't need an IEP or a 504, but we do require someone who is trained in, in understanding how children and people read or have access to the documentation that talks about how they're eligible for this service. Thank you, Lisa. 
so much important information has been shared today. I see Jackie, you have one more thing to contribute. Sorry, I clearly very passionate about Bookshare. No, we're, we're happy to have you. <laughs> um, so well, there was a question and I answered it in the Q&A, but I just want to make sure that everybody um, is aware that students with physical access, uh, complex bodies, if they have difficulties with physical access, they also qualify for Bookshare. So I actually have students who are eye gaze readers. They communicate through, through eye gaze and they use Bookshare via eye gaze. Um, we're working on it. I mean, it's a process. <laughs> They're learning how to do it. But um, I also, you know, so if you have a student who has fine motor coordination issues or other, other functional book access issues, right, then they would, they qualify. So um, please don't forget your students who have physical disabilities and complex bodies as well, um, because this could be a game changer in regards to reading for them. That's right. Yeah. They want to read too, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And unfortunately, a lot of people think, oh, they have a complex body. So we're going to just focus on functional skills, forgetting that reading is the most, one of the most functional skills that we can teach a student in school. And so um, I'm, I'm a really big believer in making sure that all students have access to um, to books and to reading, even even those with complex bodies and complex speech. Great, Jackie. Thank you again. And Tina, I was pinged in the chat real quick, so I want to make sure I, I am very clear. Um, there was another question that asked about: Do you have to go through your school, or can you use Bookshare outside of school? Um, you know, what if the school says no? Um, so. I had mentioned the school accounts and the individual accounts, the home accounts. Um, you, you can go through your school. If the school does not support it, that's okay. You can definitely um, get your individual account as well with you know providing that proof of disability. Um, but for those of you who have accounts in the school and want your children to read outside of school, that's why we really encourage that individual and organizational account. So the school account that is linked to the home account, because then that student can read not only what's assigned to them by their by their teachers, but they can also read the books that are of interest to them. And you know, we touched a little bit about on social emotional and, and Jackie and Ellery, uh, Emery, sorry, lots of E's talked about, you know, their experience, but you know, we've heard from parents over the years that have said when their child was able to read the same books as the kids who are on the bus with them or carpooling with them, they really felt like they were able to contribute to the conversation instead of just kind of sitting quietly. And that's a game changer, right? You know, being able to access the same information and talk about it with your peers is really important. So if you have a student that has a school account and you'd like to get them linked to a home account as well, um, it's a fairly easy process. It's one button and you know, just talk to the teacher and ask them to send you the information so that they can add that as well. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, that, that opportunity to read for pleasure is really important and not just the books that are assigned to them by their teacher. Thank you all so much. Thank you panelists for spending the time to share with us such valuable information. Um, I know a lot was talked about and there was a lot of links shared. And so the recording of this webinar will be posted on the Office of Ed Tech's YouTube channel and website tech.ed.gov slash accessibility. And we'll include links that we have shared. Um, I also want to highlight that the next Ed Tech for All webinar is on August 29th at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific with STEMI, which is an, for early education, early education practitioners on STEM resources. Um, and then I'm just gonna share a few resources from Office of Ed Tech. We have our quarterly newsletter, which you can find at ed.gov slash subscriptions. Um, we also have our blog, which you can find at tech.ed.gov slash blog with lots of different resources. Um, I also want to highlight the Affordable Connectivity Program because ACP provides a discount of up to $30 per month toward internet service for eligible households and up to $75 per month for households on qualifying tribal lands. And so if you are a parent or a educator, um, there's a lot of money that's not being used. And so, you know, if you have a child who receives free and reduced lunches, then they would qualify. So please, please, please share this with the families. Um, and I will, um, lastly is um, the Office for Civil Rights Digital Accessibility video series. 
if you're new into accessibility, these are really great brief clips to share um, and to learn about digital accessibility. And I will pass it to Tina. Thank you, Ellery. Um, to learn more about OSEP and our work, you can visit our OSEPideasthatwork.org uh, website, and you can sign up for our blog and newsletter at sites.ed.gov slash IDEA. Uh, we're trying to drop the links in the chat, and I'm struggling to do that. So as soon as we uh, figure out how to do that within um, Zoom, we'll get those links added up for you. Um, Again, we want you to register for our next EdTech for All webinar series uh, focusing on STEMI, and we'll share that link to register shortly. It oh. looks like at the moment we may not have the functionability to chat those, but like I said, this will be posted on tech.ed.gov slash accessibility, and we'll have all of the links um, so you will still have access to everything. Um, but sorry about that. And thank you all so much for joining and um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye everyone.